him down because he is the risen king. He is seated in majesty, and that's where we look forward to be one day. Amen? Yeah. Amen.
because we can say hallelujah, we can call on his name because it's something that we cannot explain. It happens when we call on his name. Healing happens when we call on his name. Deliverance happens when we call on his name. Peace happens when we call on his name. Joy happens when we call on his name. So will you help me call on his name? Hallelujah. I like this part. 
glory. Hallelujah. Victory today is mine. It's a great day to be with you all in the house of the Lord, Bethel. It's a great day for victory in the name of the Lord. you didn't show up ready to shout and pray, if that's not your testimony right now in this moment, that is okay too. But I'm going to say hallelujah anyhow. This morning, I want to talk to us a little bit about the power of witness, but will you pray with me and for me? Almighty God, we thank you for the power of your presence in our lives. for the movement of the spirit when we don't have the right words to say. We thank you because through your word we receive life. And so we come now asking you so that new life flows out and into us. Fill us so that we might hear your message. And in the places and the spaces where I fall short, will you make up the difference with the power of your spirit? Bless this moment. Blessings in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, in the year 1997, there were two men, Reed Hastings and um, Mark Randolph. They were starting a company. You see, they had a vision for the future. They saw a, a day that was coming when, when technology would provide anyone who had the internet the ability to access um, TV shows and movies on demand. You could stream them. They started a company, and the company, I'm sure you've heard of this name, many of you, Netflix. Anybody ever hear of that? Two and a half years into their existence, they went to the Blockbuster Corporation. You see, Netflix had an angle. You could order the movies online, and they would mail the DVD to your house. Some of you maybe even remember that. But they were always looking towards the end goal of the day when movies would be allowed to just stream. When you wouldn't need the DVD or the VHS tape or any of that stuff. So... This fledgling company, they got a meeting 
with the Blockbuster Corporation in Dallas, Texas. They went in and they sat down with the folks at Blockbuster and Netflix had a staff of 100 people. They didn't have any building. Blockbuster had 60,000 employees and over 9,000 stores scattered across the U.S. And they made an offer. They wanted Blockbuster to buy their company. And they would manage Blockbuster's online department and Blockbuster could continue with the physical stores. But you know, Blockbuster struggled with the vision of the Netflix people. This whole online cloud thing that they were talking about seemed too mysterious. It was too difficult to understand and it was invisible. And so, the folks at Blockbuster laughed the two Netflix fellas out of the room. How long has it been since you've gone into a Blockbuster? <laughs> Netflix hung in there. And eventually their vision of that internet, that online cloud where the movies could simply stream, <clears throat> that vision came true. Blockbuster, I think they have one store now. That's it. All because they couldn't wrap their head around this mysterious cloud. Today, in our scripture, we hear about another cloud. I, I, I think that this is probably the first cloud. The first cloud backup, let's call it. And this time, what you're streaming, I think, is more valuable than just a movie. It may be just as mysterious. It may be just as difficult to wrap your heads around. It may be just as invisible sometimes, but it is far more valuable. Let me remind you of what our scripture said to us today from Hebrews. Listen to what the author of Hebrews says. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and the sin that clings so closely. And let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, that's a good place to say amen, somebody. Amen. The author says, we are surrounded by a cloud of witnesses. You know, sometimes as Christians, we, we get caught up in the Christian language and, and, and um, we hear that and say, yes, cloud of witnesses, but this week, I found myself asking, well, what does that really mean? What exactly is a cloud of witnesses? And I wonder. And I was sitting at my desk doing some work. And I was not in the greatest of moods. Some days you have those days where you're just not in a good mood. Anybody else? Amen. Happens to preachers too. And I was working, and when I'm not in a great mood, 
I have a little trick that I do. Um, I will go to YouTube and I'll watch little videos. Sometimes it's like a kitten or something. Other times it's a dog. It's a puppy climbing a gate. There's, never mind. Anyway, <laughs> YouTube had a recommendation for me. And the recommendation was a video for a song I had not heard in probably 20 years. A song called We Are the World. Anybody remember that song? We Are the World. Um, it, it, was, it was written by Lionel Richie and I think Michael Jackson. And the proceeds were supposed to go to fight the, uh, the famine in, in Africa. So I clicked play, and the song started, and, and Lionel Richie started off. Lionel Richie said, uh, um, there comes a time when we heed a certain call, and we must join together as one. You remember the song? And I went, yeah, wow, I, I remember Lionel. And then other voices began to join in the choir. Uh, Stevie Wonder is in that song. Ray Charles is in that song. There were some voices that I didn't recognize, though. As I was working, I would look up from my computer and say, well, who is that one? Bob Dylan is in the song. Diana Ross is in the song. And by the time they got to that chorus, you know, um, we are the world, we are the children. I looked in the crowd, and what I could see in the crowd were some people that I didn't even realize were singing. Um, Harry Belafonte is in the song. Did you know Harry Belafonte was in We Are the World? Who else was in there? Harry Belafonte was in there. Um, uh, the Pointer Sisters were in that song. And let me tell you, by the time the song was over, my mood had changed. By the time I finished listening to all of those voices sing to me, my mood had changed. And I wonder, I wonder if this is kind of what the writer means when the writer says we are surrounded by a, a cloud of witnesses. You see, before the 12th chapter, in the 11th chapter of Hebrews, you get what we call heroes in the hall of faith. And name after name is listed of people who had done great things in faith for God. Listed in that, in, in that list of names, you have people like Abraham and Sarah. There are people like um, Moses and the whole Israelite camp. Noah is listed in the hall of faith. And I wonder, and I wonder if, if what the writer of Hebrews is saying is the cloud of witnesses that surround you are, are, are people who have stories. They have verses in the song that could change your life. They could change your mood, at least, if you were able to just listen to what it is they are saying to you. Let Noah sing to you when the task in front of you is bigger than what you think you can handle. Let Noah talk to you about the building on the ark. When you're looking for direction, let Moses talk to you about his time in the wilderness. 
download some of these stories from the cloud of witnesses and they can change your life. Amen? Certainly change your mood. And so uh, there's a couple of things that I want to say about witnessing. One is that witnesses have been placed in your life to help you endure, to help you persevere. That the gift of a witness placed in your life is there to help you make it through your seasons of heartache or your seasons of challenge. You are surrounded by some folks who are there to help you remember that, that what you are facing is nothing that God hasn't seen before. But we've got to download the stories. We've got to stream the stories. The witnesses have been placed there to help us endure. And listen, you wouldn't have to endure anything. You wouldn't have to persevere through anything in this life if life wasn't going to be difficult from time to time. If Christianity was a free pass. But God has given us the gift of witnesses to help us. But you got to be willing to stream them. Blockbuster faith alone won't get you there. Amen. Witnesses have been placed there to help you make it through. The other thing that I want to say to us this morning about witnessing is this. How many of you realize that you are a witness? You are a member in someone else's cloud of witnesses. Your life story. You are singing a verse and a song that might help someone else make it through what they're going through. I remember reading in um, Becoming. That's that Michelle Obama book. And Michelle Obama wrote, you know, Failure is a feeling long before it's an actual result. I'll say that one again. Failure is a feeling long before it's an actual result. Sometimes when people are going through things and they are, and they are experiencing hard times and maybe there's a failure of their faith, it's your witness your presence just showing up might help them shift their focus off of what they're dealing with and focus on something else. Endurance and perseverance. You are a witness in someone else's cloud. And sometimes it's difficult because, you know, how many of you ever worry that you're not going to have the right thing to say? Maybe you won't have the right words. When people are going through a hard time, you, you don't know what it is to say. I don't know what to tell them. And you're looking for that right thing that will make it all better. Sometimes the right thing is nothing at all, Amen. Sometimes it's simply showing up. That's called the ministry of presence. I remember um, watching in a movie, uh, The Black Panther. And this is a spoiler alert. If you have not seen the movie, then I'll give you like three seconds to cover your ears. And I'll wave you when I'm done with this part. But life is rarely like the movies. There's a scene in that movie, The Black Panther, when um, Chadwick Boseman's character, um, um, T'Challa, is being challenged for his leadership position. And the way that they answer the challenge is through combat. It's an action movie. And the two competitors, they square off in a fight. And they are surrounded by a sea of faces. 
witnesses are all around them. And the star of the, uh, the movie, Chadwick, T'Challa, he's, he's not doing well in this fight. He's losing. He's tired. He's discouraged. And there's a scene where his vision begins to get hazy and he slumps over backwards. And while he is doing that, he happens to catch the gaze of his mom. You remember this scene in the movie? Angela Bassett is his mother, and she has sat as a silent witness the entire time the fighting has been going on. And then, at the right time, she speaks the line that changes the entire course of events. She simply says to her son, show him who you are. And he finds encouragement and he finds the strength that he needs. He finds the inspiration. Witnessing is rarely like that. Sometimes we have a great word to say to people. Other times, it is just about showing up and laughing with them or crying with them or holding their hand when they are going through a hard time or just sitting silently with them. Amen? You are a witness in someone else's cloud. And it may be your presence that helps point them towards Jesus. And Jesus will do the heavy lifting. Jesus will do the rest. I remember sitting with a friend. And um, he was battling pancreatic cancer. And we were in a public space. And he saw some other people that he knew. And he went off to speak to that group for just a moment. And when he came back, his expression had changed. And I said, well, what's wrong? And he said, let me tell you something. Whenever you're talking to somebody who's dealing with a hard time, never say that God never gives them more than they can handle. And I must admit, I was guilty of saying that a time or two. And I said, why? He said, listen, I have cancer. That person just told me that. And what I heard was that God gave me cancer because God believed that I can handle cancer. And I cannot handle cancer. All you need to do is simply shut up. power of your witness can simply be in your presence. The power of your witness can change lives. Two things. First, you got to be willing to download the stories that we already have about the folks who have done some great things. Let those stories encourage you. Let them point you toward a God that has been awesome, that is awesome, and that will be awesome in the future. Amen? Amen. And remember the power of your presence. Don't overlook that. I'm closing. There's a story about a nun. She was out making her rounds. She was going to visit people. And she was going to visit someone who was off in a distant area, and she had never been there before. And it was a little further than she was prepared to go, and she ran out of gas. But she remembered just a few miles down the road, there was a gas station. So she got out of her car, and she made her way back to the gas station, and she said, do you have a gas can that I can buy? And the gas station attendant, with all the sympathy in the world, said, I'm sorry, sister. I just sold the last one a few days ago. 
but let me go check in the shed to see if there's anything you can carry some gas in. The gas station attendant came back with an embarrassed look on his face, and he said, all we had back there in that old shed was an old bedpan. But it'll hold some gas. She said, I'll take it. She went out to the pump and put the gas in that old bedpan. And she carefully made her way back to her vehicle. She got to her car and she carefully poured the gas from the bedpan into her gas tank. She got in her vehicle, she started it up, and she made her way down the road. When she got to the intersection, she noticed that there was a farmer in a pickup truck speeding across his field. He cut her off, and he said, Sister, I'm sorry to ride up on you this way, but I was moving before I realized what was going on. And I want you to know that I saw what you did back there, and I just had to chase you down to find out how I can get that kind of faith to put in my tank. The power of your witness. People are watching whenever we do anything. Whether we realize it or not, you are a voice in someone's cloud. And you have been blessed so that you can be a blessing to others. So that you can point them towards the Christ. That's God's hope for this world. That we who realize that we have a God of love and mercy will pass that lesson along to others who desperately need to hear it. But we can't get there with blockbuster faith. <laughs> Let the church say amen. amen. Hallelujah. service where we invite you into a moment of discipleship maybe you are someone who is considering their relationship with Jesus Christ and you are saying well now's the time for me to take a take another step we invite you not to just join Bethel but we invite you to enter into a the church eternal to take your place in the choir to sing your verse
where you are. We will come and pray with you. If this is the moment where you say, this is, this is it. I'm ready to take this relationship with Christ to the next level. say amen. Will you join with me in a word of prayer? We thank you, holy God, for the ways that you have blessed us. We thank you, almighty creator, for your blessings of endurance, your blessings of perseverance. We, we thank you for your inspiration, for your divine works of salvation. We thank you. Help us to remember the God that we have. by problems. Help us remember that surrounding those problems is a cloud of witnesses encouraging us along the way. We ask these blessings in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. We have some announcements coming our way now. morning again, Bethel. So please, let's take a moment. My boss upstairs sent me down here, she said, for me to review the announcements for the week with you. Uh, as you can see, Bible study is this Tuesday, 6 p.m. We are continuing with our COVID testing on Tuesdays and Wednesdays and Thursdays. So please come out and get tested, everyone. Continues to support that uh, program here at the church. We have birthdays. Uh, Nevaeh Love, August 13th. John Maxwell, August 16th. Anna Coleman, August 18th. And Richard Buckley, August 19th. If you see those people, wish them happy birthday. Amen. If anyone is interested in joining our security and ministry, uh, we need someone to drive the van for Sunday to pick up members. Please contact Judy in the office. We have a one board meeting this week, August 17th at 6 p.m. And we will be doing a free clothing giveaway in the parking lot Wednesday, August 17th from 11 to 3 p.m. All right, Bethel, I believe uh, let's remember the prayers for our sick and shut in. And those are our announcements for this week. God bless each and every one of you. Oh, it's, it's your birthday? Tomorrow's your birthday? Okay. Want to recognize anybody else's birthday that we missed? Pearl? Okay. Amen, everyone. Have a blessed and safe week. this offering this morning. We thank you, almighty God, for these gifts that you've blessed us with. We
return to you just a symbol of how good you've been to us. But we bring it to you in the hopes that you could take it, break it, multiply it, and make it so much more. love, your mercy, your forgiveness, your grace, your salvation into places where the hands and the feet of the members from Bethel can't even get to. Will you help us remember that in the places that we can get to, offering to you for your holy purposes. We ask these blessings in the powerful name of Jesus Christ. Let the church say that we have some visitors here. I usually don't do this, but I will ask this time. Is there anyone that wants to share? Let the church say amen. Let the church say amen again. that we received here this day be not just enough for ourselves but enough for us to share will you remind us that although we have come here to worship we head out into a world to worship and serve Send your grace and your peace upon us and with us. Let it rest, let it rule, and let it abide with us this day and evermore. Let us all say, Amen.